well, welcome everybody. This is our recap episode for Coffee Walk in 2022. Uh, does everyone want to go and introduce themselves? Yep, I'm Zach behind the camera. I'm Alex, I just do everything. I'm Kelsey, I do whatever he tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dennis, all I have to do is talk. Sean Pettiford, I follow coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm James, I just drive as well. So. And get things done. And get things done. <laughs> it's going to be outstanding. Can I go ahead and thank everybody for y'all's incredible hard work? The behind the scenes work that Kelsey does is amazing. I think everybody would agree that Zach is amazing on the camera and audio, which by the way, in my opinion, is the hardest part of it. Y'all just don't realize it. And it's just one person. Alex has killed it not only on driving, but in all the mechanical aspects of the cars. He, he does them everywhere from detailing to getting them run into assembling full restorations. Sean and James have been instrumental in helping us get this done. and. This is pretty incredible. These three have put a quarter of a million miles on our trucks this year. That's crazy. So if you don't think everybody worked hard this year, we did. But I'm really proud of you guys. So thank you for that. Well, so go ahead, y'all. Sorry for the interruption. Well, look, I want to thank you guys. Planning Coffee Walk has been a little bit challenging this year with travel and weather and all that stuff. There is never, y'all have never not gotten home. There have been a lot of issues. There have been canceled flights and missed flights, weather, truck issues, trailer issues, all that. Rental car issues. Rental car yeah. issues. So thank y'all for handling what y'all could handle. I really appreciate it. Question, what was everybody's favorite buy this year? Zach, do you want to start? Yeah, I can start. Uh, I think the Countach was my favorite one. It's just a cool car. Yeah. And it's, you don't really see very many of them anymore. So. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Cool. That was a low net car. It was very interesting too. It, was very it didn't interesting. come across in our camera, but it was a little bit more sketchy than the, it looked. Yeah, <laughs> it was steep. It was very steep, but that was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alex, what was yours? Mine would have to be uh, the Longview episode with the '67 no. Shelby. That was a mess. K code. Is that the one Corvette. where the keys were in it? And no, they're, they're all lost, chained to the chained ground. The ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the hardest, but it was one of the most fun. Rewarding ones. Well, the other thing that was really neat about that episode is you know, for Alex and I, well, every, even you guys, every, everywhere we went was a different rare part, yeah. either to the car or extra parts. Yeah. And we're still sorting through them, and Alex is coming up with cool stuff still to this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be an update on the red GT500. It's just about done, isn't it? Almost. That was a really neat episode. Dad, what was yours? My favorite buy episode. I know where my favorite food was. What was, what was you your favorite? favorite buy first? Okay. <laughs> um, go ahead, Sean. You go ahead. We hardly ever go to the West Coast, but when we do, we make an impact. So the pizza <laughs> takes mine. Pizza. The pizza. So the, the San Francisco buy, for those of y'all who have never been in there, where Sean took that truck and trailer, first of all, it wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> no. What is the map that like shows the hills, there, it's like a type of map Topography? or Topography? Yeah, may, may, yeah, that one. Something like that. Well, I was looking at that and seeing the measurement of the truck and trailer, and I was just like, that's never going to work. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so what we did, which y'all didn't see on camera, is we actually drove the route. We tried three different routes, so there was only one route that would work. We drove it in the rental car first, mm -hmm. because if we'd gone the other two routes, which we'd well, never made the turns. Well, we, we, I don't even think we got it back out of there. I would have got it out. I just would have took out a whole city block. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another one that uh, is kind of hard to tell on camera. Maybe Zach got some really good angles, but I mean, that hill was like that. We weren't yeah. kidding when that car would have kept going. Like, it wasn't going to stop. Even if it yeah. hit something, it would have kept going. Yeah, These are the buys I don't hear about until y'all get home. Oh, <laughs> I have to go much. and I just get a one word back from Zach. Great. There's, <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's also the episode that uh, Zach lost the drone for a while. Yeah. Like, we thought it was gone. We did think it was gone, so that was the San Fran shoot. Yeah. So be careful. Get a water tower be careful. Shot? No, trying to shoot the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. I mean, the, the wind flies over those hills, mountains, way no faster joke. than you think. There's no Well, he had, he had it up there and trying to get the shots, and while it was up there, the clouds came in so thick, you couldn't see it. It was gone. And then, so he's looking at his screen, and it's gone. <laughs> and finally, after what, about five minutes or ten minutes, it starts creeping back on the screen. So slowly. It was crazy. Almost hit Alcatraz, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That was a neat buy. 
James, yeah. what was your favorite buy this year? It's hard to pick a favorite. There's so many cool things that we've done. They're probably the Pantera buy. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was really good. That's, that's, like cool. still, that's still probably one of my favorites yeah. for sure. Those were yeah. cool. Seeing those cars come down yeah. the dirt road and going yeah. onto that main highway. Yeah, yeah that, that was really cool. The whole story behind it and just yeah. being in that area, you know, where so much had happened, I think was a cool story. I think my favorite buy is gonna shock you guys. Mm. One was because the owner was really exceptional and the story was exceptional, but the green 240Z. Mm, to yeah. find a guy that was in the military while he's in Ethiopia, ordering a car that's California spec with AC and smog, has it shipped into Ethiopia, drives it there for a year, and then ships it back to our Dallas Fort Worth area and keeps it his entire life. That was cool. And the condition yeah. of that car, Alex, is amazing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We haven't gone through yet, and we will, but once that car is detailed and done, you guys will see why it's. And to find a Japanese car like that in that condition with that low miles, with the original wheels and hubcaps, the original radio. Uh, but it's also neat finding those two motorcycles that you and Zach got. Oh, yeah. um, and the guy was just a really neat guy. Cool license plate on the back of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why it's my favorite buy, but when I'm walking through the warehouse, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite car, but I'm shocked at how nice the car is every time I walk through the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I'm gonna give the 240Z my favorite buy. Well, my next question was gonna be, I think, Everyone will know the answer to this one. What's like your the most sentimental car to you? We know it's Goldie, and mm-hmm. we know why it's Goldie. So, kind of going off that question, would that be the most sentimental car that you got this year from a Coffee Walk episode? Um, I mean, maybe not just necessarily to you, but like to see the the, the story to someone else. Well, all the Shelby's have a story. Yeah. And those are all sentimental. I think the red R was probably the biggest sentimental story that we had out of all. You know, and that was a great buy too. You know, that was definitely one of my favorite buys. That was a really neat owner and it really was truly in the barn and really took the side of the barn apart and yeah. drug it out. And by the time Alex got that car back, it was able to save the original paint. Yeah. And the detailing you did on the undercarriage, all the chalk marks coming back. That, that was a neat buy too. Yeah. That was very sentimental. That was so hard. That one was. I tell you what, I Quite honest with you, I liked almost every buy we did this year. Same. I, I, I liked them all. I'm proud of what we did, proud of what we got. Now, some of them were, I don't know if somebody asked it what the hardest buy was, but Longview was very hard because yeah. it was extremely hot. Yeah. The cars were just there simple. early. Yeah, we got there crazy early. We had a ton of people, too. Oh, it wasn't for all those people. Well, it was what it fell out. The North Carolina Mustang buy, mm-hmm. I left twice to get cases of water. We drank two cases of yeah. water. I mean, I don't think we've ever gone through that much. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is a lot of these times, which I'm gonna get in trouble with my mom again on this, we get going and we don't stop no. until it's done. Yeah. We don't leave and go to lunch. People don't leave and take all the bathroom breaks and all that stuff. Once we're on a job, we get it done. Cause we want to get back to the hotel, shower and have a good yeah. meal. <laughs> Cause everybody knows there's gonna be a good meal. <laughs> a meal is a key. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess segue into that one, everyone's favorite meal. Oh, y'all haven't oh, had time to think about that one. Meal or restaurant. And we had some good ones. We, yeah. we had a lot we of food. Lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of food consumed on Coffee Walk this year. Ordered on Coffee Walk this year. Yeah. Well, Kelsey keeps a spreadsheet. She is uh, incredibly meticulous, which is fantastic. <laughs> Our food bill, guys, has gone up considerably. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was inflation. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> No, she sees it. Yeah. We'll blame ordering, we'll blame inflation. Yeah. inflation. Yeah, I think favorite food's a great question. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a couple. All right, Sean. Go please. ahead. Oh, that uh, made right was one of them for just a hole in the wall that was place. What would y'all have there or what? The made right. The it's a ma- mega made right or whatever. It's it like a, a taco burger with taco meat, with soft meat. But, it but was the neatest so thing was good. Everybody working there was family, mm-hmm. and there were yeah. some ladies in there that were in their nineties. That's really. Cool. That was for a hole in the wall. That's it by far. That's but yeah. the best one I think was Rockford, Illinois. That Rockford Brew, Brew House. Yeah. That was by far, that was close that. point was on point. That, that was good food. That yeah. really was. And James is somewhat of a foodie, so I'm interested in what his favorite is. <laughs> Man, he's he, James particular on his whiskeys and his food. Y'all gonna have to come back to me because there's, okay. there's too many to narrow that down. Yeah, there's too many of them. Yeah, I need, a, I need a second to think on that. Uh, my favorite food? Gosh. 
or favorite macaroni. I know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. let's narrow it down for y'all. Oh, that's, that's a whole different story. That's, that's even harder. That's hard. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's a whole different. We can't category. do that. Oh. Best mac and cheese. What is y'all's favorite kind of noodle? Oh, the, uh, the twisties. The twisties. Yeah, we. Every time we got the twisties this year, it was kind of like a little treat. Yeah. We're we're more excited for those because normally you just get like the elbows or the penne. But once One you time get, like, the penne came out and you like you almost cried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, like, it's it's not, not right. You feel kind of normal. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. The twisties for yeah. sure. We stay pretty consistent. You need to think about your favorite food, Alex. Well, I always order chicken or something healthy now, so. <laughs> All right, how about you, Zach? Oh, God. I had a lot of chicken fried steaks, too. I feel like I had a really good burrito somewhere, but I can't remember where it was. At every place you mm-hmm. It's pretty much what you order anyway. There's a burrito, <laughs> macaroni, and cheese. Um, all the food in Belize was really good. I, that was mine. You're not supposed to say that. that. I wanted to go on. <laughs> that is just not fair. We got left out. Yeah. I have two. Uh, tomahawk. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I yeah. think that was in Chicago. Well, I didn't record no, that, was, that one, uh, but you took a picture of yeah. it. Yeah. It was in um, Connecticut. But it hands Connecticut. down, period, bar none, the food in Belize was the best yeah. I had all year. Chris Hawkins travels all year. That's what he does. He said it was the best food he had all year. But it was also the cheapest meal we had all year. And we ordered everything on the menu. <laughs> what was it, like 70 bucks for like six people? And we did it two times, people? ordered... Everything we could possibly order and ate as much as we possibly could. Is this y'all talking hours. me into booking more? Yes. More. <laughs> one was seventy dollars U.S. and other was a yeah. hundred. Oh. And then, I mean, those taps here would have been five hundred to a thousand at least. It was a lot so of the police food. food was amazing, but we had some great, great food this year. Yeah. Do you get your cholesterol checked? <laughs> yes, I do get my cholesterol checked. It is up this year. Uh, <laughs> last year. <laughs> Um, and yes, mom was watching that and she, <laughs> she, and she sees the numbers. So yes, I am taking some vitamins and supplements that I never had before, <laughs> but I'm, 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 not, I'm not on cholesterol medicine though. That's funny. <laughs> Where is the M1? Okay. So the M1, um, and I've been watching these closely. So is Alex, all the ones that have come to market and we've had a couple of experts look at our car. I believe that we do have, and we'll, when we're finished, have the nicest M1 in existence. Absolutely. So we have spent a tremendous amount of that time on that car. I actually told Alex and Josh to stop putting the hours down because they were so high. Anyways, we were at 2,700 hours. It's a great way to track it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is a <laughs> car to start with, but I mean, we have gone, this is gonna be the finest restoration we've ever done. Yeah. So the M1 is now at Norwood Auto Italia doing the final test and tuning on the motor. Um, which Alex and Josh, and we want to thank Ron Basinelli for that. Ron's one of our neighbor friends, who's the smartest guy on the planet. Came out and helped us, got it, helped us get the car going. We brought it over to Norwoods and Michael Lundell at the car. He's like, who did all this? Like, we did. He goes, it is a miracle y'all did all this without the tools that we have over here. Because the fact that you got it running and running this good is incredible. So what the holdup on the car is now is the mechanical pump in the car, which we rebuilt mm-hmm. and is working. It's got a shaft that runs through the center of it that changes and rich and leads the car out when it's hot. Nobody in the U.S. had the capability of fixing that pump. And Michael, who's a genius guy over at Norwood, he's like, I don't know that you guys would ever figure this out. Because we did, you know, because obviously he's familiar with all things, you know, he's who we use for our Ferraris. But that pump is in Germany. So as soon as the pump gets back, that car is probably doesn't need more than what two weeks, Alex. Yeah, I can at the most. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, we've left the carpet out of it because we found an NOS set of carpet, which has to be the only set in the world, the proper bluish, greenish, gray color. Uh, the seats we had Jody DTS do. We've left those out because I don't even want anybody to touch them. They are so mint. So if the car is running and driving. I would I would put that car right now at what ninety percent done, maybe ninety five percent done. Yeah, ninety five percent. And when you guys see it, you'll, you'll be shocked. Just even in the engine bay and engine parts and stuff like that, we had between the exhaust and you know, the acorn nuts and the plating, we had seven different colors of plating yep. to get exactly right. I don't know if anybody has ever done that on one of these cars. Uh, we recreated every single decal on the car, exactly perfect, even to the smallest detail, decals that you don't even see. I mean, we even restored the original air filter assuming it goes in the air cleaner. 
Yep. And the last couple of M1s that we saw sell didn't even have their players. No, nope, they didn't. They're, they're missing lots of incorrect parts and everything on this car is correct. So, will it be done in 2023? Yes. <laughs> promise. Well, That's promise. <laughs> promise. <laughs> we, thought, we thought this was going to be the year of the Porsche and it turned into be the year of the Mustang. This building, this entire room, will be 65 to 73, 911s and 912s, all in here. Yeah, that's going to be um, awesome. And it not only turned into be the year of the Mustang, which we, we bought some really, really rare Arco Cobra Jet cars, yeah, Arco to S-Code Mach 1s. Uh, we bought two K-Code Fastbacks this year, which is amazing. One of my favorite cars of all time, because it's basically the base of a 65, 66 Shelby. But we bought, this year, eight Shelbys. Uh, that's incredible. I, it, that's incredible. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, I, I started buying Shelbys when I was 15. Uh, chasing the newspaper every single day because I threw the papers and to buy that many Shelby's in one year is very difficult. Um, and it's hard to get people to turn loose of them. Correct. But if next year continues Shelby, I'm in. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Everybody sitting in this room loves Shelby's and, and, <laughs> and understands them. And by the way, January 11th is going to be Carol Shelby's 100th birthday. Wow. That's awesome. Yep. So I think we should sell one of our Shelby's on his birthday. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey's nervous because she thinks we're putting a Shelby collection together. We're not. <laughs> we no, are. that's not what we're doing. It may look that way, but that's not what we're doing. I think some would argue that eight is already a collection. <laughs> it is a collection. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll continue on the Porsche collection. That's going to be outstanding when we release that. Yeah, I agree. Um, Alex, this one gets asked all the time. Do you have a favorite car this year that you've worked on? Hmm. Or your the most challenging slash fun car that you got running this year? I like the uh, 68 and a half R code. I like the 67 Shelby I'm working on now, the red one from Longview. Uh, but the coolest car would have to be your car behind you. My car? Uh, the car oh, yeah. 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 That's cool. Because Alex got to run that car the same week and Kelsey did. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. That was That's a lot right. of fun. That's get. the biggest smile I've ever seen on both of their faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think our cheeks were sore for like days after oh, that. Yeah. Sean, how do you park the rig when we go eat? It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely magic. See, Lots I always of variables. The parameters that make sure the hotel has a parking lot big enough for the take three. But I, my expertise kind of ends there. When y'all pick where you're going to eat. Well, planning these trips, when I am able to plan a trip, um, I Google Earth everything. So I know in advance what the hotel looks like, what the site looks like, and then I get Dennis Curveballs. <laughs> so <laughs> the Dennis Curveballs throw me all off. So it comes off I'm in a bad mood sometimes. No. <laughs> well, there's a lot of curveballs happening. <laughs> Well, one of the cool things that Sean incorporated this year that we weren't doing in the past, and we certainly has helped us a lot this year, because our rigs are big and they are long. Really? And now that we're running the forklift, there's heavy, you can't get jammed up. And he's running a, not only are we running ways, but Sean's got a Garmin that's just a trucker app that shows you where to go in a truck. So yes. you don't get under these short bridges and things like that or get jammed up in the neighborhood. That's helped a lot. Yeah, so it'll keep the beauty marks off the trailers. Yeah. Question for everybody. Do we see the real Dennis Collins on Coffee Walk, or does he put on for the camera? Oh my God. One hundred percent the real Dennis yeah. Collins. <laughs> Not even a question. Because I mean, and that's the proof in that is y'all shoot everything off once. The one yeah, yeah, completely it's off, all the off the cuff. And I, it's funny because a lot of the time they'll come back for the trip, and both of them will be like, "Oh, it's not a good one." Or that, like, this one's not going to be entertaining enough, or not enough happened, and then Zach will sit down to edit it, and it'll be really cool. It'll actually be a lot, or show yeah. everyone's personalities a lot, or more about the history of the story of, of the car that you guys are buying, and then sometimes it's like these crazy, cool-sounding buys, and then, but if it goes too smooth... Yeah, then it's, it's boring if it goes too yeah. smooth. Like, if something goes bad, I feel like that's when the... Like, we, we kind of have to do our little, like... So our audibles starts. and like we start kind of getting creative and stuff and I think that's a big part of what makes the show fun but yeah whenever the, sh the buy goes too smooth it's like well that was too easy yeah like come on 
Well, we are getting much better at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't think we've ever, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've ever reshot anything. No. Mm-hmm. No, not that I'm aware of. Well, in most episodes or by for the week, he comes into my office about 12 hours where they need eight flights booked to leave the next morning. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of time, or wouldn't even be a whole lot of time to plan something that wasn't yeah. real. Like well, that. there's yeah. there's a big side of this, and you know, if all of us here are involved in it, it does take a tremendous amount to put it, pull this off, is the show comes out every Friday. And we all have our own separate things to do of the coffee walk. It's very important and we always get it done. But I do wait too much to the last minute because I want to get put the very best content we have that week on camera. Yeah. Could we go do something every day? Yes. But it's not gonna be the best car that we bought that week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, on camera, I don't know how many cars we showed this year because some of the buys had multiple cars. I'd say we probably showed, what, 200? I would well, say all yeah. the buys in multiple cars. You've been coming home with six, eight yeah. cars a buy. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we, we all like two hundred. Like yeah. so. right, you know, we all like that better, don't we? Oh yeah. 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 yeah except for when you're going from Massachusetts to New Jersey. <laughs> that was the cri- that was the hardest one for me. Y'all flew into y'all flew into imagine. Boston, yes. then drove up to. Gosh, y'all. St- first one was in Massachusetts. And then the second one was somewhere in New York, and then the third one was somewhere in New Jersey. But it was Pennsylvania also. Or, yeah, well, yeah, Pennsylvania. one was Pennsylvania, and then y'all flew home, or then y'all flew home out from of Pennsylvania. from Pennsylvania. Yeah. So this was all in like three days. So everything I do uh, is on a big chief pad, and <laughs> like this, this is my <laughs> this is my defense. That's why I don't like to answer emails very often because I only do things in, in, in description because I've written car descriptions my whole life, so everything's not proper. So anyways, when she gets a piece of paper from me, she's kind of like, she has to decipher, okay, she'll look at it while they come in, it's like, so you want to do all that in four days? I'm like, yeah. She's like, that is just not possible. Well, and it's Here's- an actual maze, because it won't be like, starting from the top is by one, and then the last one is by seven. It's, I'll like start going down, and you're like, no, 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 that's the second buy. And I'm like, how's that the second buy? Well, you've drawn, an, exactly. drawn an arrow yeah. that goes around the other ones. So, so here's what happened on that trip, and she, she's also watching the weather, which we're all watching the weather. Yeah. So I, I got everybody to guess, said, look, we're going to go do three buys in four days, and you guys are going to drive roughly, what, y'all do 4,000 miles that week? Yeah, yeah. just under 4,000. So in, in the end, anyways, just even driving up there in the rigs, which I was driving one while we were up there, we did over 1,000 miles just in the northeast. But that storm, which is still going on now, was chasing us all over the place up there. Yeah. And if you watch, we, it was a miracle that we weren't either in the rain, the ice, or the snow. And these guys, these three guys, just barely got out with the race. Yeah. Well, it was like by one, the weather was fine, and then we go to by two, and then it's snowing at by one the day yeah. after. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, it was like following yeah. us down the northeast. It was crazy. Well, and then the by right before that, we did in St. Louis, which we also knew we were in time crunch, and it snowed there the next day. Yeah. So that storm, and I, I had all those on the board. I was like, guys. These were supposed to happen over a six week period. We've got to do all these no. in less than 10 days. Mm-hmm. And so I brought that to Kelsey. She's like, I'll book it, but there's just no way you guys are going to be able to do that. And it went, I was going to say it went off without a hitch, but it almost did. I mean, yeah. everyone stayed in the hotel slash state that night that it would have, was initially planned on them staying, which was impressive. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's you a lot guys to be said for that. killed it on that trip. But, and like, and it was correct, and we all we all agreed on it that if we don't get this done now, we're not. We, yeah, well, very, to me, we're going to lose some of the cars, it wasn't yeah, which I didn't want to lose any of those cars because yeah. I chased them all for a long time. But it wasn't going to happen until like March, so that that was pretty neat. So among all the hats that Kelsey wears, and everybody in here wears multiple hats, you never know what's going to happen at Carlos Motors or Coffee Walk. It's basically what is the best thing we can do that day, or best thing we can do that week. Kelsey, not only does she Run social with Zach, which is a huge thing. You guys have done a killer job. That's Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. She runs the sparse department, but she's also become very, very good at widget making. Which has been his dream for me since the day I was born. Oh, it, it, it has been. <laughs> and, and I've told her mom that forever, and she and her mom was like, I don't know, Kelsey, I bring it to bed. Anyways, just this year, Kelsey's done all these widgets. 
and they have been very successful. So we'll go over, or I want to go over slash like share some of them. This has been a dream of ours since we started Coffee Walk, his own coffee blend. And we've kind of talked about it before, but we went with Blue, Blue Island with Chris Hopkins. We really wanted to, like, at first, we're thinking about going with, like, big, partnering with big coffee brands for Coffee Walk because it sounded really cool. And then when it kind of got down to the details of it, we realized, like, this is Coffee Walk. It's having a personal relationship with everyone that's a part of it and liking the business model and being able to actually call somebody up on the phone and ask them questions when you need to and it not being a big, like, corporate structure. So we went with Chris Hopkins with Blue Island Coffee, but then got to have or create our own Holy Grail blend, which is your, a combination of your favorite coffee flavors. I, I told Chris what I liked, how I wanted it to smell, and how I wanted it to taste, and he nailed it. Basically a snickerdoodle cookie. <laughs> <laughs> with a little bit of cinnamon. With, yeah, with a little bit of cinnamon. And a little bit of French vanilla, but it tastes great. And I think that Blue Island, correct me if I'm wrong, has about 10 flavors. Yeah, probably. And guess what flavor is the number one seller? That is a rad. Yeah, number so that's one. Cool. Yeah, um, it's a way to go, Kels. That's awesome. So that's been a fun thing to watch grow this year. Um, and then your favorite thing ever is anything AMC Jeep. Well, we restore Jeeps at Collins Bros. So we've been working a lot with just like the small, intricate things that when a guy is restoring his Jeep, like normally people wouldn't recognize or pay attention to but when a cj guy op opens the hood if you see the the battery or original battery or we like even got all the way down to the yeah there's actually decals. yeah there's there's three decals that go on the original batteries uh on the battery itself on the battery itself so huh. kelsey and zach have literally replicated every decal there is on every 76 to 86 jeep cj every single decal Kelsey's organized them all on the website where you can find them. And I'm amazed because one of the first things she does in the morning is she'll usually pull her widget orders because one, I think it makes you happy. It makes you happy. Well, it makes you me happy. Them, but but yes, it, is, it does, it does. It is an incredible undertaking to keep all those. I don't know how many decals you have now, but I think it's probably 200-ish. Probably 200. Uh, but she's done all those. Um, she, she did get both the horn buttons done this year. Yeah, these were... They, these have never them. been available, so you know these are American Motors Jeep. This this is for Laredo. Take that one, or take that one out. This is for Laredo, which is which has enabled which us is that, to which is the center of that. have horn buttons. And then the one that Kelsey's got in her hand is for the base model, and which this is a base model, and the Renegade horn buttons right here. Uh, and the quality is amazing, and it's just a really great finishing touch on the restoration because the first thing you do when you get the Jeep. Did you look at the horn button? Sure do. Yep. <laughs> sure. And you want that to be nice. And then I, you look at the horn button and then you look at the glove box door. And so we've done these. These are probably our most... This is the most intricate, intricate thing we've ever done. Yeah. Uh, this, the the Silver Anniversary, not only does it have curvature in it to fit on the glove box door correctly, it's got holograms in it. It's, oh, this cool. is just absolutely an unbelievable deal. Now, uh, this kind of limits you because there's only a thousand of these Jeeps. Well, I'm glad we have a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, generally we have to make at least a thousand something to make it cost effective at all with the tooling and all that. However, a lot of people are starting to put these on their 79s. Because in theory, every 79 is a silver anniversary well, Jeep. Well, really yeah. cool. So if you got a 79 Jeep and it's not a silver or silver anniversary, it's okay. You can still buy one of these and put it on your 79. Very cool that you did that. Yeah. It was cool. These, I didn't realize, so the artwork around each letter in that is different. It's not the same pattern duplicated over for every letter, so that one was... So we have tried time. multiple times to get these done. I need Zach to focus on this just for a minute when you see it. But behind every letter in here is a completely different work of art. And Zach understands this stuff intricately. <laughs> he looked at that, he's like, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. This is incredibly difficult. Uh, Kelsey's working with the company now that's just fantastic. But the first three people we sent this out, they're just like, there's just no way. Mm -hmm. It would be absolutely cost prohibitive to make that. These were very expensive to make. Well, and a lot of this stuff and that's really why they're expensive to the, to sell the, as the well. naked eye. And then once you get to actually like reproducing it, you realize how many specifics. These are dead on the money. And they are really, really intricate trick. And you know, in Laredo CJ is the top of the line Jeep. This is a huge finishing touch. 
because these just never aged well. Uh, whenever you, even a lot of times you get a short time. model right out, they, they turn colors and crack. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got those. These we never had in the past, and I don't even remember having them NOS, but these are the bezel surround for the door handles. And uh, Alex actually found a company to take, I don't remember how many of these we made, again, it's probably a thousand, yeah. and got these power coated to the exact right finish because these are punched in a die, out of aluminum, exactly correct. And these went on Renegades and Lorenos with hard doors, but these also fit all the way uh, uh, YJs and TJR doors. Yep. It's just a cool trim piece that goes around the bezel. That was neat that, that we really pulled that off. Door. It really does. Yeah, we have the Levi's buttons with the proper backers, which is the kicker. It, these are nearly impossible to attach in a trim shop without having the proper backer. And we have a backer for every button. So from 76 to 78, it actually says Levi's, and then 79, and it, it did not. It was just a base button. So the, the really, really nice touches for the interior. And then this is kind of like a cheesy one, but you know, you have a car dealership, and you've had a car dealership forever, but we've just never... Oh, that. We've never thought about doing the simple license plate frame covers for the back and the front. And I mean, it's cool. We have the Collins Bros tire covers that we see around and was always a game that we played when we were little, taking pictures of them all over the country. And it's been cool to see yeah, these so Jeeps with the, drive around. We used to keep 40 or 50 new Jeeps out front. They all had tire covers on the back. And then uh, they started using the backup cameras. So now there's a hole in the tire cover. We kind of went away from the tire cover. So that, that was really nice to have. Coffee Walk t-shirts have done great. Uh, Collins Brothers, you came back with the old school nostalgia one. Keep it simple. So I, I agree. I mean, you know, for a while we had way too many t-shirts. Now your options are old school design Collins Brothers, which I love. Established 1984. And your Coffee Walk shirt. I have two questions for the viewers. What? Would you guys like to have a coffee table, coffee walk book that showed all the places we ate at and what we ate? Ooh, I think that would be really, really, really cool. Really cool. Ooh. So you guys think that's cool? What do the viewers think? I think that would be really cool. The, every restaurant you guys ate at, um, website, phone number, what y'all ate. And I, I think it also incorporated that, episode. which is, uh, I don't know how many people actually catch on to this, but I think it's a really, really neat part of the show. And we do invest quite a bit of time in this, is Zach's water tower shots are amazing. Hey, yeah. <laughs> By far. I, I, I just think it's super cool. I, I think a lot of viewers don't realize that, but almost every single episode, we took the time to locate the water tower. And I'll tell you what, it is amazing. We buy cars from people who lived in town for 50 years, we ask where the water tower is, they go, we don't have one, or I have no idea. <laughs> and they're not very Googleable. Yeah. No, not <laughs> no we, yeah, we do that all the time. It, it, so, actually, the easiest way we found that Zach does it is we'll find a high spot in the city and he throws the drone up. And just find it somewhere. Well, that's usually that's how you can find it, lightly. Then, one more question for the viewers. Here we go. Should we put Al standing on the back of our coffee walk shirt? Oh, in quotation marks. <laughs> well, on the shirts thing. Um, I think it would be really cool if the next 50 shirts and mugs that we sold off of our website, if you would sign up. Mm. Okay. I think that would be pretty cool. Would you be down for that? Sure. We'll lock you in your office for like 30 minutes. <laughs> it takes, it takes longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, so from the time this episode comes out, the next 50 Coffee Walk shirts sold will have your and, signature. And mugs, if, and, and mugs. If you want it, I mean, and in the notes section of our orders. Yeah. And here's why, we're only, here's why we're only doing 50. I had the bright idea two years ago to, if you bought an F40 poster, that I would sign it and or if you wanted to know, put it on it, I would handwrite the note. Hmm, I remember those. We missed, what, that's the only, we've only missed one coffee walk, ever. And that was in lieu of posting coffee walk episode, is that you would sign any so, poster sold. I sat up there for a solid week signing while Connor and Kelsey spent a solid week packing posters. Um, we're not doing that. Just about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of uh, a tube, tubes. That was not what we anticipated. <laughs> you don't realize how long that actually takes until you have to do it five or six hundred times. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, that was a tough week. Um, then just kind of off that, Zach and I wanted to just mention, we get a lot of questions about 
giveaways and contests and all that stuff, we try to bring just like entertaining content and informational content and just really try to stick true to our, our platform with Coffee Walk. And we've never done a giveaway or a contest and we probably never will. We get five to 10 emails and phone calls a day from people that are getting taken advantage of on online from our from our pages um, with spammers and hackers and trying to get credit card information and all that stuff and we're just probably gonna sit like stay away from that. Yeah. Um, so if you get something that says you won, you it has pictures of me. You didn't win. <laughs> no, we we. We're not gonna text you. We're not gonna <laughs> respond to comments on YouTube saying you won something. If you won something. Well, you won't because we're not giving anything no. away. Yeah. So. Or, yeah, we, no, we're not giving cars away yeah, or houses or airplanes. Yeah, or, just don't click on it. <laughs> just don't click on it. It's not it's us. It opens a can of worms for sure. Yeah. yeah. I like it that does. it's purely organic. It don't, you don't need it. It just, I, mean, it, I think it just works. With the Island Coffee, it's, it's more of a partnership than it is a sponsor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, we all see where... Dennis leaves his coffee cups throughout the day. He drinks a lot of coffee, <laughs> so it's very honest. I do. Um, I do leave the cups everywhere as well. Partnership. Get it, Sean. Get your glasses out. Get your glasses out. <laughs> this is why I can't see Vins. <laughs> uh, what nobody ever talks about when you just brushed on the whole drones was your drone footage is amazing. And I'm going to throw out, and I hope he puts it out there, is in New Orleans, New Orleans is so packed that there's no place to park our rig that Dennis just said, well, just pull in the field. Well, the field was the roundabout off the freeway. And he did an amazing job of literally taking off the roof of the truck, flying to the water tower and showing the rig, the freeway and everything else. San Francisco was another amazing one. There's a bunch of them that I think are so underspoken of that are just filmatically amazing. I appreciate that. Yeah, and you guys will have just seen them as he was talking about that. Yeah, I think you them. should throw in like a top 10 of them. That top 10? Well, I, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if there were 10. I, I guarantee you there were more than 10. Now well, the drone that. generally goes up on every trip. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Except Belize. Unless, well, yeah, I was about to yeah. say, I heard about that one. Stopped in They wouldn't let it fly in Belize. Well, there's, there's, been been a couple, it. there's been a couple of these middle nowhere buys that he's thrown it up and it comes right down for security. Yeah. We didn't realize that there was a very small muni or a private airport close yeah. mm -hmm. that have those beacons where you can't mm -hmm. use it. So we do try to, use, I, I really like drone shots because I think mm -hmm. it's, uh, the viewers a totally different perspective on you know where we're at. Correct. Especially when we're in the middle of nowhere, which I say that a lot, but I don't say that unless it literally feels like we're yeah. in the middle of nowhere. But we're in the middle of nowhere a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's we true, have, isn't it, guys? We have to make sure that we are full of diesel because we don't know when the next time we're gonna get food, yeah. water, or diesel. Yeah. It's very common that it's such an obscure place that you choose to buy a car from that if it's with in 10 hours drive from the office, y'all drive because the nearest airport is probably three, four hours away. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a time saver to fly. And you could be three states over. So, so for me, the rule of thumb that I've used quite a bit this year was, and, and I'm willing to drive too. I think these guys will test that. I don't mind driving. Um, if it's less than 600 miles, I'm driving for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and Zach knows that, well, everybody knows that. If it's a thousand miles, Kelsey will look at it and say, well, you know, it's a thousand mile run, Dad, said, but the closest airport's a hundred miles from there, or 200 miles or whatever, and then no good hotels, you know, just, there's sure a lot the of parameters that go into those decisions. And we make sure whoever's driving the rig never has to drive, if they need to come pick you up from the airport, we make sure it's never out of the way. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to send you to the, yeah, the buys here and then go pick up Dennis and Zach and then come back. Yeah, I mean, make sure that these three guys will literally come pick us up at the airport. Which, with the trucks. With the yeah. trucks. Yeah. <laughs> what are the, what am I not to do with the trailer, but sometimes yeah. it has to go. One of, my favorite, one of my favorite shots, and it's in there, but mm -hmm. is uh, Atlanta Airport, which is one of the busiest airports in the world. <laughs> Alex comes pulling through there. I thought he was going to drop the trailer. Yeah. He comes pulling through with the enclosed trailer and picks us up. So we are now at the Chattanooga Airport. 
because we were at Chickamauga rescuing the Mopars, which are now in the trailer. Alex dropped us off in the truck and the trailer. He said straight back to Wiley. We're gonna head to Atlanta. We're gonna have some diesel therapy, and then to Dallas, and then home to Wiley. Here we go. And the guy's like, "You can't do that." It's like, "Well, he's already here, sir." Why don't you, I mean, <laughs> well, like buses drive through there all the time. Well, what's like, the difference? I can fit. Yeah, that was impressive. Yeah. But me and Zach will start laughing. <laughs> I was like, we gotta hurry and get the truck and go. That was good. But yeah, the logistics is definitely interesting on these trips. And, and again, we, we it's not that we're rushing, because when we get there, we, we do what we have to do. You know, if the meal takes two or three hours, we do it. If it takes an hour to get the water tower, we do it. But we don't lollygag around. Burning we get there, daylight. Get back. Burning yeah. daylight is yeah. the worst, because we do it in one day. Yeah. And we only have so much time. And then logistically, just getting out of town with all the influx of new people in Dallas work has become difficult. Mm. So there, there, there are a lot of times we leave the office at five in the morning, which means everybody here is getting up at four-ish. But if we're not out of town by six, you're just wasting time. Yeah, we're I'm glad you finally caught on to my way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't sleep, so he doesn't care. <laughs> so what time do you usually get up? About, you usually get up at four. No, if I have if I go to bed with something in my mind, I'm napping, and then I just go <laughs> home, and I get up and I'm gone. So I also I'm, tell you this: I, on all these trips, again, I'm so proud of everybody here. I always put a call time, and sometimes it's very early because it's gonna be a long day. I've never one time gotten a complaint, and the only person that's ever late in the morning, ever, 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 is me. <laughs> yeah. I've never walked downstairs where they weren't all there, and I I really appreciate that. So. But I'm usually pretty close to on top. Okay. Someone's gotta make the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to ask this, ask myself this, because a lot of people, I get a surprising amount of DMs on Instagram about what gear I'm using. So I'm gonna put yeah, all of those right here. <laughs> Cameras, microphones, everything is right here. But I'll tell you this, it's not the gear, it's the user. Yeah, it's, it's the Indian, not the Arrow. <laughs> we get this asked a lot. First car and daily driver. Okay, I'll start. Uh, my first car was an 03 Chevy Silverado 1500 single cab. Trucks. Trucks. Always <laughs> trucks. Uh, and then now I drive a 2021 Jeep Gladiator. My uh, first car was an 03 Dodge Durango. And my current daily driver is a 98 Tahoe. Got a 70 Challenger project car, almost done. It's, it's outstanding. Yep. And an 80 I think it'll be done about the same time the M1's done. <laughs> that would be Hopefully. fun. <laughs> fun episode. Um, my first was a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And now I, I mean, numerous cars later, I always go back to the Grand Cherokee. I have a 2022 Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve Edition with the Hemi in it. My first car was a truck. It was a 48 Chevrolet truck, five window, original paint in park blue. And my the car that I drive the most, which I don't really have a daily driver because I try to drive something different, Let's say you do not is my driver. 1999 550 Marinello Ferrari. Uh, I just had it fully serviced again and it's got 42,000 miles on it, and I plan on putting 10,000 miles in that car this year. And what my goal is, is to get that car to 100,000 miles. Hmm. Well, I'm from Minnesota, so my first car is gonna crack both everybody up. <laughs> it was a 82 Chevrolet Blue Cavalier. Whoa, Lord. Black, <laughs> black vinyl interior, no air conditioning in Texas. Wow. Oh, get you some of that. I don't want any of that. <laughs> my daily driver now that makes me happy is my 06 uh, military Humvee. That's what I thought you were My M1123 slide back. And Sean is truly a car slash truck guy. I don't know how many he has, but it's a lot. I think we're at 15. 15. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a big garage. Yes. It's a lot James? Of possibilities. My first truck was a 1967 Ford long bed pickup truck. And currently, I drive a 2006 Jeep LJ. One of the and best Jeeps it. ever built. I love my LJ. So we all fit a theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm random. That <laughs> 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 Sean also, not making this up, drives a police car. 
Retired. 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 Retired military, retired police. I know you're off that day if I see the Humvee yeah. at the front of the office, because that means you're yeah, taking out. a day yeah. that you want to enjoy, exactly. and that's when you take that out. That is when I take it out. I was going to bring it today, but I figured my dog would get mad, and she's hefty. Think that she's going? <laughs> yes. His dog's named Shelby, so he's obviously a dog. I didn't know that. Yeah. You have a Shelby, and I have an Enzo. Well, it was going to be Chevy, because I got Nova. But I needed a Ford in the family. That's actually a great question. Yeah. Everybody's pet's name. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach. You're the only one who loves Zach's. <laughs> well, I've got two. Uh, my wife's little teacup chihuahua's name is Brayden. Brayden. Of all names, whatever. And my cat's name is Banksy, like the artist. I don't have pets. All right. <laughs> you have cars. Yeah, I have cars. <laughs> I have an Italian greyhound named Enzo and a border collie named Lori. I have a Dutch Shepherd and his name is Rip. We and he's a disaster. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, I've got Rottweilers, so I've got Nova, and then I've got Shelby, so they're both after cars, obviously. How great is that? That's awesome. James? I don't have any pets. You just gotta take care of yourself. Somebody's got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What other questions you got, guys? Uh, well, I think we're going to just wrap up with um, expectations for 2023 with Coffee Walk, or if anyone has like, your goals. or. Well, here's our commitment to you, the viewers, and thank you guys so much for sticking with us and watching this year. We're going to continue to do this as long as everybody's healthy enough to do it every Friday. Um, so thank you guys for watching. We're going to put the effort into it. You guys will take the time to watch. So we're going to continue on all the way through this year. We've only missed Coffee Walk one time since we started. That was because of my poster fiasco, and that's not going to happen again. No, it's not. <laughs> so we're going to do our best this year not to disappoint you guys and be on every single Friday. I think we have enough opportunities already looking at us at the start of the year to bring us to the end of the year again. We have got some really, really good, interesting stuff coming up uh, in the near future and the far future. It's going to be a great year. Y'all stay tuned because it won't be boring. And we'll keep working on updates. We kind of started doing that a couple weeks ago. Yep. And Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the top questions we ask and that gets asked of us to do is to film Alex working on the cars or film the restorations going on in the shop. If you've ever done that, it is just really taxing and tough on the shop environment, which is why we don't do that. That is why we're doing the updates. We do want you guys to see the cars, but you're going to see more of the update of the finished car than you're ever going to see with the process of the motor coming in and out, the interior coming in and out. We will try to do more of what's in the booth because I really like that, you know, seeing the cars painted. You know, if, if you ever get to see that in person, it really is impressive. Uh, we do the best paint jobs in the world, but we will do our best to continue the updates. I don't think we'll hit that every week. No. Um, so I'm not going to commit to that, <laughs> but I will commit to Coffee Walk coming out every Friday. And so for the updates, it'll be significant stuff, and, and mainly what's involved in that is, you know, the, the work that Alex has done or the shop has done. Mm -hmm. So what do they have to do, Alex? Uh. <laughs> Before you say that, I've got to thank you, the viewers, for even coming up to James, Alex, and I, or any of us that are at truck stops or restaurants and say you enjoy the shows, yeah. it makes our day, yeah. knowing that we are doing something yeah. that is respected. Bringing someone some joy yes. somewhere. Yeah. Means it is the coolest thing ever, yeah. or being at an auction. Yes. Yeah. And we, we oh, really good job with Coffee Walk, and we're all just all like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. so thank, cool. thank the yeah. fans. It is a very humbling experience. Yeah. I, I, and if, if you guys will take the time to read some of our comments, I think we have an incredible fan base. Yeah. Uh, Y'all are so nice and knowledgeable. To us and, and knowledgeable as well. So we'll continue to work hard if you guys continue to spend the time to watch. Absolutely. Okay, so write that down. What are they supposed to do now? Please like, tag, share, and follow. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy New Year. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. Good job, y'all. Oh, I think that's great. Very good job, sir.